And we're back in the studio because it's still cold outside. It's winter in our part of Europe. I'm too sad. I'm too sad about that. <laughs> but what we have over here is probably the best adventure helmets right now, available right now on the market. Take a look at them. I've taken a close look, but uh, I think these three ones are already you dirty. You know them, yeah? What, <laughs> what happened with them? Well, these ones are, are, are my helmets. And uh, the other two, uh, I just picked them for, for this uh, video. But let's start with uh, each one of them. Because this one was uh, the first helmet I bought. It's the Shark Explorer in a carbon finish. The second one is the Schubert E1. Yeah. It's a flip-up helmet with this beak. And the, the third one, my actual helmet, uh, the last one I bought, it's the Arai Tour X4. And we also have the well-known uh, Shoei Adventure helmet and nice helmet from uh, Climb. It's called the Cryos and it's very light. Uh, I'm gonna start with this one, with the Shark. Because, yeah, as I told you before, it was my first helmet. It is derived from a touring helmet, from a full face helmet, actually. Because if you're removing the beak and these goggles... Yeah, uh, you can put a visor and you can, can use it on, on your naked bike or touring exactly. bike. Exactly. Uh, and the, it's a Vision Air helmet. That was the model, the base model. And this one is derived from the Vision Air. It's called the Vision Air because it has a huge visor. But, on the other hand, when you're putting the, the glasses, the, the goggles on, uh, your visual field of view is not that, that large. And yeah, I don't yeah. like it. I, I, can, I can realize that because it's smaller, you have this whole area covered by the glasses. So uh, It's a quiet helmet, it's a good helmet. Uh, you can use it in cold days without having any problems because, as I told you before, it's basically a full face helmet. And let me show you a cool feature you have a pocket right here and you unzip you the find? zipper <laughs> and what you get is a wind stopper for your neck oh, so you Which, put it on you have the wind stopper too. yeah exactly and it's very nice you, you don't need a balaclava or something like that or a wind stopper when it's cold all you have to do is to pull the helmet on and strap it behind your back so now we can go outside and ride <laughs> Actually, it's a very cool feature and I used it while riding in colder days. Uh, also, it comes with some integrated uh, sunglasses. It even has sunglasses. Mm -hmm. Yep. And they work really good, but it's not the best uh, visor quality. What actually. about the weight? Is it heavy? Because it, you showed me a lot of features. No, I, I, I can't remember the weight. It's, uh, it's just like a, as a normal full-face helmet. I don't think it's heavy. It's not. Uh, it's a comfortable helmet. Uh, you 1. can wear 1.7 or somewhere around yeah. there. And uh, yeah, I can't see the weight. I think I... Uh, Scrub it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Anyway, uh, it's very important when you're choosing an adventure helmet to be ventilated. And this one it's not that ventilated. I mean, uh, if you're riding in off-road, for example, you can remove this color. Okay. I think this, this is the right word. And what you, you get is, it's not that elegant, but you can get a lot of air from, uh, from this side and it, it gets more ventilated. But if you leave this color on, you don't get as much fr fresh air as you want uh, when riding so in off-road. So no cooling down when you're using with the color. Now, the Schubert, the E1. Basically, this one is a C3 Pro with a beak. And that's it. That's, uh, I, I mean, okay, uh, the guys at Schubert uh, say that uh, it's more ventilated, it has a larger air intake in the front, but it's not that good when riding a bike with a windshield, with a big windshield. You can feel the air, the fresh air when, uh, when you're riding uh, in, uh, when you're standing on the bike in off-road, but that's it. It has a removable chin guard for the hot base, and it's a flip-up helmet, basically. Yeah, this is very useful for adventure bikes. Yeah, when you're riding, uh, I don't know, somewhere far away and you're stopping by and uh, you're stopping to, uh, to ask <laughs> to someone say about hello. <laughs> yeah, to say hello, all you have to do is to, uh, to flip it up. You don't have to, uh, to take off your helmet. Uh, I had some problems 
some issues with the visors. I don't like the quality of the visors on the Schubert helmets. Uh, this mechanism over here is broken, as you can see. Uh, if trying to ride with your visor open, uh, the visor will fall. Uh, it's a problem also the pin lock. It doesn't have that such a good quality. I think I changed about uh, five or six visors on this Schubert. That's pretty much. Mm -hmm. But I used it for about, I think for more than 100,000 kilometers. That's huge. Yeah, I, I used it, this helmet in South America, in Siberia, in uh, the Caucasus, in Morocco, in Norcap, and in uh, the most of our test rides we've made uh, on our uh, video channel. Because you can also remove this beak, it's very easy to do it. And what you get is a standard flip up touring helmet, and you can use it on every bike. Uh, you get some, uh, some buffeting depending on the windscreen you have on the bike and depending on your height. So uh, this is not a, not a standard feature. What I also love about this helmet is this color. This material over here is very rugged, as you can see. I left it on all kinds of places. I put it down on the, uh, next to the bike and this looks as new. Also, the interior, it feels very plush and very comfortable. Probably Schubert still builds the best helmet interiors I ever seen. Uh, I mean, it's amazing. Uh, I, I, I'm taking it off uh, to wash it. And after that, just uh, put it back and it feels the same. Right now, right now, after washing this interior, it feels as new. It's, it's really nice. It's a very cool interior. That's what I love about the Schubert. I love the fit the interior and the comfort it gives me. I can, I can ride for 12 hours a day, day after day, day after day, day after day for the whole trip, and I don't feel uncomfortable. Then why did you buy the RI? I bought the RI because I, I got bored. <laughs> of course, you, you must change your helmet from time to time. And uh, because uh, I always wanted to try the RI because this is a classic helmet in the adventure segment. It, it looks very aggressive, it looks very nice, and uh, it's more ventilated actually than the, the Schubert, than the E1. You have this problem with the Schubert when riding in off-road, you, uh, you don't get as much as fresh air as you'd like. Okay, so I like the colors on this one. Tell me more about it. Yes, and it's not just the colors. You have these huge ventilations. You see it's the main one and the other two ventilations. You have other vents you know, in the... Uh, upper in the area. Upper so area. you also have the ones on the windscreen. On the visor, yeah. yeah. They, they are very nice. Um, you know, what you don't have, you don't have uh, an integrated sunglasses. The guys that are right, they never put integrated sunglasses on the helmet because they say it's not safe. So you, you, all you have but to do is... What the, about the, the shape the of this visor? Because it looks like it won't close uh, that good. No. Oh, it's okay. It closes uh, actually very good. It has a mechanism over here. Okay, the lock. Okay. It has a lock and it's very easy to close it. And it's very easy to use it. I like it because it's a large visor, you, you, you see everything from this helmet and uh, you can't feel it uh, when, when wearing it because it, it's a very good balanced visor. It, the, the weight is distributed evenly. Yeah, the, and the, it's, it, it's not a light helmet, you know, because it has... Uh, 1.6 kilograms, yeah. Yeah, 1.62 kilograms, which, which is quite... Let's say a lot for... For a helmet. For yeah, a helmet. Because we're used to 1.3, 1.4. But it's not just about the weight. It's about the weight distribution when, uh, when, you're having, uh, when you're wearing a helmet. Because you can't feel the weight on this one. Perfect. So I, I used it for uh, only for a couple of times, three days, because I just recently bought it. I also dropped it. <laughs> I've seen that the paint is chipped yeah. over there. But uh, what's also very cool about this helmet is that uh, you have uh, custom cheek pads. Okay. And so if you feel a bit of, uh, if you feel it a bit un uh, uncomfortable, you can uh, change the cheek pads and choose uh, the sl slimmer ones. Okay, so you can take off the, you can peel off some uh, yeah, you can cushion from there and, or you can choose a smaller one. Another ones. one, yeah, yeah, exactly. And uh, this is what I'm going to do because I, I, I feel it a bit uncomfortable on the left side. It's because of my head shape. Yeah, yeah I have a problem. It's me, it's not the helmet. Also, uh, this part, the color part, 
I don't know how resistant will be because it, it, it now it feels very plush and nice, but uh, it, it doesn't feel quite rugged, you know? <laughs> yeah, we'll see after a year or two. Yeah, something like that. But otherwise, uh, I like it so far. I like it very much. It's a, a nice helmet, a very expensive one, but it's a nice helmet. And uh, probably the Shoei is expensive too. And yeah. it, it looks very good. Uh, unfortunately, I can't wear a Shoei helmet because of the, the head shape. Yeah, I know from uh, so far that uh, the Shoei guys uses the same technology and the same features as this RI. So it should be very close in matter of performance to the uh, tour that you have right now, the RI2 X4. Yeah, but I'm gonna try the Shoei because I, I just talked to, to, to the dealer by phone and uh, he said to me that uh, uh, they have some custom uh, lining from the f for the interior. That's nice. Yeah, it should be very nice. Uh, this one, it's a, it has quite the same uh, weight, even though that big, it's so. B yeah, it, it large. says uh, 1.56 grams helmet alone, and with optional parts, 1.6. I don't know what uh, optional parts mean, but <laughs> doesn't matter. This has a very nice finish. It's the Honda Tricolore you can find on the Africa Twin. So it, it matches perfectly, that bike. <laughs> and uh, you, you, can sport, you, can, you can see that the visor, uh, although they have the same shape, the visor is a bit different on the on the RI compared to the Shoei. It seems a bit taller on the RI than this one and also you don't get that much venting in the front area so and I think this might be a problem in riding off road and there's also this chin guard which is a lot larger than the one on the RI. Yeah the, the RI has uh, it also comes with the chin guard which is adjustable so but I don't think extra it's wind protection and extra cut of noise. Yeah, but I don't it think it's uh, as effective as this one on the Shoei. Also, the visor on the Shoei is uh, rounder. It feels like uh, more, more like a street visor, let's say. So this is a more touring intended helmet than that one. So that one is a adventurous looking. Uh, yeah, one. this is the most adventurous. This one and that one from the guys at Climb, the Cryos. I've taken this one in my hands and it it's incredibly lightweight, so you, you almost can feel it. Um, even my racing helmet, it's uh, yeah, a this, lot. This is made of carbon, yeah? Yeah, you can see the straps over here. It has a very nice finish with this green also. And I like the, this visor because it, it looks uh, pretty much as the one on the Shoei and uh, the one on the RI. So uh, the same uh, insect looking visor <laughs> yeah. that you have over here. The lining seems nice at the touch so it's plush right now but we have to test it and see some more but i like this vent over here so it's a it's more huge it's a huge vent but it's you, a more you can't adventurous, close it. yeah it's a you more adventurous helmet so what so, you gonna do when riding it uh, in cold days uh i don't know what <laughs> you can do but the thing is uh, the the air is dispersed towards your cheeks and it's going out on the uh, both on both sides and there's also a fair amount of air coming up to your eyes so I don't know I know you, you, you could disturbing. put some duct tape you know yeah <laughs> <laughs> like a proper racer you know duct tape solves everything <laughs> you can put it over here you can also use this helmet with uh, goggles with oh, uh, that's very nice yeah like a proper enduro helmet you don't have to remove the, uh, the, the visor or the visor you can put it on and uh, when you're off from enduro you can take the goggles off and just close the visor it looks very good I like this uh, uh, Spoiler? I like the spoiler over here. It's like uh, intended for racing. Uh, we'll have to try it some more because uh, it looks very good. It feels very light. And this might be a promising helmet. Yeah, and the guys at Climb, yeah, and the guys at Climb, they, uh, they just announced us that they are gonna launch the Cryos Pro version. So it, it will even, arrive soon. even better. Yeah, one. it should be even better. I'm very curious about it. Okay, so far, what helmet should I buy? What can I look for? What well, should I look for? I think from, from this helmet, uh, this one, the RI and the Climb, are the most adventurous helmet. I mean, you, you get 
a lot of fresh air. They're built for 50-50 uh, on-road, off-road use. Uh, if using an uh, RI, for example, and a Cryos uh, on a street bike, uh, not on a street bike, on a more street-oriented adventure bike. Uh, like a touring. Yeah, you, if you're using it for touring, on, on, on the asphalt, uh, well, and if you're using it in colder days, uh, it might feel a bit uncomfortable. The noise, the wind that you get and something like that, because these are very ventilated helmets. Uh, I think that the Shoei is somewhere in the middle, offering uh, a good balance between uh, the adventure shape and features, the air you take and the comfort. Uh, I, I heard that it's very comfortable. I asked the owner of this helmet about it, and he said that it's the most comfortable helmet he ever tried. And it's, it's very quiet also, which is very interesting for this type of helmet. So this is somewhere in the middle, the Showway. Right after that, I think it's the Schubert, the E1, and the Shock. Because uh, these helmets are more street oriented, more touring oriented than adventure touring. Therefore, let's say 90, 80, 90% on road use. Because they're basically touring helmets with a beak and that's all. You don't get a lot of fresh air for, for when riding uh, in off road, but what you get is a comfortable helmet, a quiet helmet. And uh, this is very important for those who, who using the, uh, are using the bikes for highway touring or for, uh, I don't know, for street touring, for riding days after days. Uh, the Shark is the cheaper version, let's say. Uh, the E1 is more Somewhere expensive. Between, yeah. The E1 is more expensive. more expensive. Yeah, it's more expensive than the Shark, but it feels better. It feels like a better quality helmet. What you must have in mind when buying a new adventure helmet, first of all, it, it must fit you because it must be comfortable and you must have in mind uh, how you're gonna use your bike. If you're gonna do more street use or uh, more off-road use, because it's very important. As I told you before, this one is more ventilated, this one is less ventilated. And besides that, I think uh, it doesn't matter. Just go and uh, try the helmet and so to take it for a ride. We should buy all of them and then try them. So. <laughs> yeah, but fortunately we're journalists and we can do it without buying them. That's I a cool thing, didn't really? you? <laughs> But still, I, I bought these helmets, three of them, a lot of money. <laughs> <laughs>